Physics and EC, Hyderabad University, Islamabad. He received his PhD degree from IIU and the postdoctoral degree from the University of Missouri, USA, in 2011 and 2016, respectively. In 2013, he joined the Nast University, Islamabad, Pakistan, as postgrad head and was promoted to the Associate Dean Computing. SEECS in 2017. He has been with the School of Computer Science, University of ULM Germany and the UMKC as a research fellow. He has more than 220 publications and book chapters with total citations of 5542H index. Please welcome Dr. Moazam Ali Khan Khatta. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, His Excellency Chairman Sin HEC, uh, Vice Chancellor Sin Madras to Islam, uh, Dean Computing, and Dr. Mansoor uh, for providing me this opportunity uh, to visit this prestigious institute, uh, our alma mater of uh, Kaidaza Muhammad Ali Jannah. Uh, it's indeed a great honor of this institute and standing here is an honor for me as well. Uh, so today my discussion will be uh, mostly about the cyber security uh, threats and challenges uh, and we will cover some aspect of a recent incident or you can say the war that have taken place uh, between Pakistan and India uh, in the capacity of cyber security. Uh, so this is the top of my agenda. Uh, here is my brief profile. Uh, we are actually working uh, on AI-based solution. We have funding uh, from United States. Uh, we are collaborating over there uh, with Germany and UK. We have won a grant from British Council as well. Uh, with China, we are actually collaborating on underwater Internet of Things. Uh, we have uh, some collaboration with Saudi Arabia and Kazakhstan, uh, and besides that, uh, with Turkey and Malaysia. Uh, I'm also serving as a young professor in University of Missouri uh, and Osak University, Turkey, since 2016. Uh, we are organizing this state-of-the-art conference, which is Hornet ICT, uh, and this is 23rd version of this conference. Uh, and we are collaborating with the University of North Carolina at Charlotte uh, in this conference since 2005. This year, this conference will be held at GIKI uh, in December 2025. So I would like to invite you as well uh, for this conference. So now coming toward uh, my talk. Uh, and you can see here that we need to be much more uh, offensive rather than defensive for these uh, cyber war or cyber warfare. Uh, and those countries who actually address these issues as earlier will be leading the world. And we will see this that those who have allocated uh, a budget and give priority to artificial intelligence and cyber security, they are leading the world these days. Uh, so what is the cyberspace? As you know that we have a uh, physical is existing, we are sitting on a chair and we occupy some space. So similarly we have some existence in the cyberspace as well. Uh, might be even if, if we are sleeping, still someone is interacting with us in that cyberspace as well. Uh, this is the origin of war. It started with swords and all equipment that has been used at that time. Even the animals like elephants and camels were used at that time. Then we moved to the war with bullets and then onward the atomic war which took place uh, earlier in the 1940s. And then we have seen the COVID-19 is by war a uh, few years back. And, and we have seen the president of Brazil in tears where he hands up that I'm unable to save my only thing is going to digitize even you have heard about that the chip will be implanted in human body. 
So a human body will have be some uh, sort of controlling through uh, some instructions from anyone uh, from other side as well. And Elon Musk has got the permission that he can deploy this chip in human body as well. So why we actually need a cyber security? If we have a look to today's world, there, uh, the, the world is actually now divided into two parts. Uh, Pre-COVID and post-COVID-19. And post-COVID-19 uh, is much more digitally transformed as compared to pre-COVID-19. So the COVID-19 is actually considered as a blessing for digital transformation. We have been forcefully are imposed to transform ourselves digitally. And you can see that we have all the information which exists somewhere on some digital platform and that has been exposed to all those who can access that. Uh, you can see the uh, image here that the world most valuable resources is no longer oil but data. And all the tech giants are leading in terms of finances. Either you take the Facebook, you take Amazon, or you take other digital uh, platforms, they are actually leading the world. And it's no more oil uh, which was considered earlier. Uh, here are the biggest breaches and you can see that billions of users data has been compromised. Uh, this is the breaches in 2025 and you can see here that there was uh, an attack on Bank of China, Oracle Cloud, Sydney University and another telecom company talked off at UK and millions of users data has been compromised. Uh, this is the same uh, with respect to 2024, uh, where the data has been compromised. And now I'm coming toward the India and Pakistan, where the website of the other university was attacked by Indian hackers. And, and that was unavailable almost for one hour. Similarly, many ministry websites have been attacked at that time. And what they did, that they actually turned off the server to make it get that attack at that time. That was a kind of denial of service or distributed denial of service attack. Uh, I have also added the uh, reference at the bottom of this slide as well that how the attack has been mitigated by our agencies. In response, we, uh, we uh, attack their resources as well. And you have seen that their grid has been uh, uh, controlled by our user at that time. And they call it Pak Cyber Jihad uh, with respect to the term they normally use against Muslim. Uh, there are multiple attacks that have been launched against the government agencies and that was a very successful move. So it means that uh, there are some people who are still looking forward to bring Pakistan uh, at the top in these technologies as well. This is the news uh, statements at Indian media uh, about the attack that was successfully uh, taken by our people. Uh, this is now the data region in Pakistan, and you can see here this summer attack happened against Nadra, in which uh, almost 18,000 NIC of the people was compromised. Then a uh, cyber attack on National Bank as well, and National Institutional Facilitation Technology as well, where a million of dollars has been lost from the National Bank as well. Uh, one of the um, prominent reason behind these failures are the outdated technology are the free version of software we normally use uh, over here. So, so therefore we need to be very careful about because we are actually providing opportunity to those who want to penetrate or invade inside our system. Uh, and here are some cyber threats and cyber security. Uh, because of the shortage of, of time, I will move on because uh, these are actually uh, important things uh, which need to be considered at different levels. Uh, these are the countries which are actually uh, with respect to origination of a taste. And you can see here that more digital transformation has been done at that time, uh, at, at those countries. And one more reason, where well, the number of attacks are higher, so definitely the system is much more developed 
to control these attacks. And you can see that top cyber security powers is still United States. And the number of attacks that happened over there is also United States as well. This is the Asian countries where Malaysia is on, on top. And even with respect to uh, some report, we have seen that Iran is leading in cybersecurity in the Muslim world. And we have seen the incident where they hit the uh, drone of American drone and landed in Iran a few years back. So where Pakistan stand? In 2022, we were uh, at 79 and now uh, with the investment in this area, we are in the top four these countries with respect to cybersecurity. So the uh, government is actually responded to all these policies by designing the cyber crime, cyber laws, and upgradation of the system as well. So they have established the third emergency response force for this purpose in which the uh, university, and the main purpose was to prepare the force or to bring awareness among our masses that how to handle or control these attacks. The National Center for Cyber Security was established also two years back, and uh, that's why our uh, cyber security index comes from 79 to 40 because of all these actions. These are the budget allocation which have been done over here, and you can see here that US, UK, who spend more, are leading the world in these fields. And here is the Pakistan cyber security. The IT ministry in 25-26 demanded 43 billion, out of which 1.5 billion is reserved for cyber security. We still need to improve this budget. Uh, this is the new trend which has been discussed by the earlier speaker as well, that we need to inculcate AI to detect efficiently and to detect earlier. Because as fast as you detect the attack, you will be able to mitigate and to defuse this attack as soon as possible. Uh, here are some uh, 2025 research trend. Now the world is actually moving from Gen AI to agentic AI that is more reliable and more efficient AI technologies. Here are some recommendations with respect to common user, with respect to government, as well as with respect to institution that how they need to be careful about it. If we have a look to the artificial intelligence, the last two Nobel Prize last year has been awarded in the field of physics and chemistry to those who use AI technologies in the research work. So this is actually about it. Uh, we have this research funding from iCisco and we actually work on AI-based solution uh, for different problems in Pakistan. Uh, the take home is there are only two types of organization, those that have been hit and those who don't know. And that is because they are unaware of it. Uh, thank you so much from my side for any query you can contact.